guys it's k-dub here with another episode of crypto zombie welcome back to the channel hope you're having a wonderful day today now would you look at this beautiful move that we had for bitcoin a lot of people were talking about this descending triangle saying we were going to break down and if you guys were following me over on twitter I literally posted this yesterday morning. I said, everyone's calling for a descending triangle breakdown. I said, if that does actually happen, I expect it to be short-lived. Max Bear Payne would be roaring Santa Claus rally Q4 and short liquidations, not to mention the fact that we actually had the highest amount of shorts getting liquidated over on FTX. I think it was over 300 million. So I said, that's where I'm placing my bets, sending the bears my condolences now, right? And if we have a look, guys, this is exactly what we had. We had the opposite. We didn't even get the fake out. I guess you could say down here at this level when we went down to around 18,130. But remember, I told you guys time and time again that every single time Bitcoin comes down to this 89 EMA, we instantly get bought back up. This is the optimum zone for longing, accumulating, buying, dollar cost averaging, whatever you're doing. And look at this, guys. For the fifth straight month now, we have maintained these levels. So what I want to talk about in today's video is the fact that Bitcoin is actually still perfectly on track for where it should be at this point in the four-year cycle. And a lot of people are saying, yeah, but it can only rally to a certain point, right? Because we need the Fed to pivot. Well, in today's video, I'm actually going to explain why, yes, the Fed, the Fed probably most likely is going to pivot, but why we actually don't need them to pivot. I want to talk about how Bitcoin is eventually going to end up decoupling from the stocks sooner or later, even if we have this decade-long bear sideways movement in stocks like some people are calling why Bitcoin could still come out on top. And I want to talk about the $37 trillion that could flood crypto. 37 trillion guys, not kidding. So if all that sounds good to you, you know what to do. If you're not subscribed, definitely consider it. So let's dive in. Let's have a look at what's going on over here. So as I was talking about, these Bollinger Bands were absolutely screaming for a volatile move. You could see that we hadn't had, uh, you know, the bands this tight, you know, pretty much all the way back here in October of 2020. And we went on an absolutely roaring bull run. Now, does that mean that's what's going to happen today? Not necessarily, but you could see zooming in right here. Look at this. We knew we were due for a breakout. We were sitting above the basis, the center line, boom. Excellent opportunity to take that trade. I actually got in a trade yesterday. I'm currently out of the trade. I don't like sitting in them for too long. I kind of just get in and get out. The reason for that specifically, if you guys want to know, is because we did hit this first target. I don't know if we're going to continue going through it. Now, I did have a hunch that we could potentially just slice through all these levels like butter. I don't know, you know, if we're going to have a little bit of a stall at these levels. We might want to have somewhat of that confirmation. But nevertheless, guys, we broke out of the linear trend and we broke out of the logarithmic trend. And we were once again supported again by the 89 EMA. So everything is actually working out as, uh, you know, as planned pretty much. Um, you know, there could be a potential pullback, you know, like I said, um, and the most important thing was, was getting above this 19,450. You could see how long we struggled, had a fake out here, but we finally, finally got above it. So are we out of the water just yet? Well, obviously we have a lot more to go. There are many more levels for Bitcoin to get, but I do think that by the time this move is done, we could easily get back to these levels right here. Um, you know, around 22,475. So if you guys are looking to trade, we laid all of this out in yesterday's video. You had plenty of time to prepare for this move. We talked about it in the video from three days ago as well. So if you guys are interested, make sure you check out the tutorial popping up above. Remember, there's over $16,000 in bonuses below. Definitely take advantage of that, guys. Check the, make sure you are using the uh, official, you know, comment from the Crypto Zombie you know, check mark because there's a lot of scammers down there. So just be careful. Everybody's trying to scam people, take people's money. Just want you guys to be safe. Always look for that verified check mark. But having a look right here, ultimately, what do we need to do? Now, remember, I said we were in this giant falling wedge. This is very bullish. Um, not obviously, it's not bullish when you're looking at it, but the fact that we've been forming this giant falling wedge pattern pretty much since all the way back in January of 2021. This means that it is very significant. And when we do have the ultimate breakout, when we do finally break this downward sloping trend, it could be absolutely 
monstrous, like just absolutely huge. So what do we need to do? Well, the first thing that I want to point out is we are finally above this heart line right here. Remember, it's been holding us down and you could see the significance. Here it is as a uh, resistance, kind of dancing on it right here. Support, support. Then it turns out uh, resistance, a little fake out, a little fake out again. And currently we are above that level. But what I'm looking for is this 21 EMA on the weekly. Now, this is something that we use a lot. Uh, if you've been following the channel, we haven't really used it recently because we've been in a, obviously a very large downtrend. But as you guys can see, you know, historically, once we do get back above these levels, this, this 21, we do tend to stay above it for quite a long time. Now we're not quite there just yet. That level is sitting at around 22,895 and it is downward sloping, you know, keep in mind. So the longer we stay down in these levels, the uh, 21 will actually start coming down to us. But I think if we can break and hold above that 21 exponential, then basically the next thing is the 200 weekly. And then I think it's off to the races. Although do remember though, you don't really want to have these rallies happen too quickly, right? Because if they happen too quickly, then you may have a sort of, you know, fake out rally that could end up lasting six to eight months only to come back down to these levels. I wouldn't mind, you know, even some far further consolidation. However, I still am anticipating that Bitcoin's price by the end of this year, as in December 31st, is going to be higher than today's video. You can feel free to bookmark this. You can hold me to it. That's just what I see happening. I think after having a massive 70% down move, we said that this was a potential bottom. It's been the bottom now for five months. I do think we are due for an uptick. There are so many things pointing it out. Ali even agrees. He says that the you know TD sequential buy signal appeared to have been validated as well. I don't really look at the TD sequential, but like he points out, it has been validated, right? And one other thing we talked about was the super guppy. This is obviously, if you've been following the Crypto Zombie channel, we've been using this indicator literally for like six years. And, you know, it has been a very good indicator. Whenever we go into the green, we usually stay in the green for, you know, a year to a year and a half, right? And whenever we fall into this lower area right here, um, the blue usually signals the bottom is in. And once you get into the red, right, that signals that we are at the tail end of the bear. Now, it doesn't mean we can't have a fake out, right? We had this fake out down here, right? Technically, it was still the bottom, but we had this daily candle that crashed 30%. Everybody freaked out, right? But we know what happened. Bitcoin ended up going literally from $241 to $20,000. And look at this, guys. We are now in the red zone and we've been in the red zone ever since August. So this is a lot of time we've been in here and you could argue that it does look like we are putting in a giant double bottom, which is a very, very bullish pattern, right? Now I want to get to why the Fed, even if they don't pivot, may not actually matter for Bitcoin in the medium term and also this $37 trillion flood that could potentially enter. So have people been flocking to Bitcoin as a hedge against inflation? This was the big question that we had talked about in our previous video. And we had seen a lot of data that was showing Bitcoin having a lot of correlation with gold, which is typically considered a hedge against inflation and also a safe haven asset. Now, you might be saying, well, what hedge against inflation? Bitcoin's falling like crazy. Right. But this is during a time where the Fed is attempting to fight inflation. Now, if we just get out of the U.S. and we look at some of these other places, the British pound sterling recorded the highest volatility growth in September, leading to a dramatic increase in the Bitcoin versus the GBP trading volumes, which means we were seeing a lot of, you know, people that were pretty much ditching the sterling to get into Bitcoin. We weren't seeing this reflected in the USD chart, right? But if you go and you change it to Euro or you change it to, you know, the British pound sterling, you'll actually see that Bitcoin is performing much better. Remember, the Fed's been raising the rates and creating that disparity between the US dollar and these other fiat currencies, which is exactly why the UN is so angry at the Fed because of what they're doing. And that's why we're seeing these countries saying that they want to ditch the dollar, right? But look at this. The weakening of the pound can be attributed to the UK government's fiscal stimulus initiatives unveiled by the country's shortest serving prime minister, Liz Truss, which triggered a sell off in British assets and increased Bitcoin's appeal as a hedge option among investors. Now, I want to give a shout out to Mark Yusko. He's over at... um you know, Morgan Creek Capital. And, you know, he is a Bitcoin bull, obviously. He does have a projection of maybe 250K Bitcoin in the next, you know, five or six years or something like that. But he talks about why 
um, you know, ultimately, we don't really need the Fed to pivot. Now, I know that's what everybody's waiting for. That's what everybody says that needs to happen. But guess what? Everyone said that we were in a descending triangle and we were going to break to the downside. Oh my goodness, we didn't. We broke to the upside. This is why I say we cannot follow the herd. The herd is usually wrong, right? If everybody's going short, well, that's when 300 million in liquidations happen. So I do want to give the uh, spotlight over to Mark Yusko. And this is what he basically had to say. So that's a very interesting point of view, although you haven't mentioned one of the main macro factors that apparently has been driving the markets in the latest few months, which is the Fed's monetary policy. So most analysts agree that as long as we don't see uh, a pivot in mm. the Fed's policies and we don't see um, the Fed stop raising interest rates, we are unlikely to see a recovery in the crypto markets. Yeah, I, I have a different view on that. I, I actually don't, I don't buy that, that argument, right? You know, I, I think people mistakenly classify Bitcoin as a risk asset. It's not. It, it can have periods of time where it, it functions similar, or I shouldn't say functions, where it, it acts similar to a risk asset because of the types of, of market participants that are participating in the market. When you have a very illiquid market like that, it is prone to booms and busts driven by market activity. People say, oh, well, it didn't, it didn't uh, act as a store of value. Well, no, it actually did. So the Fed from 2020 to 2021 printed half of all the dollars that existed in the history of the Republic. Okay, it's a long time, 246 years. Okay, here's an interesting thing. Bitcoin went from 10,000 to 20,000. Exactly what it should have done, but it went to 70,000. That had nothing to do with Bitcoin. That had to do with speculation and gambling. And so if we look at today, uh, today, the fair value of the network has fallen back down to 20,000. Well, why is that? Well, fewer transactions, less writing to the mempool, uh, smaller transaction sizes. There have been fewer actual participants in, in the Bitcoin network. And that's because people saw the price fall and they freaked out and they backed away. And so now we're at this really interesting place where the fair value and the actual value are very tight and people are, are waiting for this big macro pivot. It's probably not coming, right? The Fed's probably not going to double the money supply again. So we're probably not going to have a, uh, a devaluation induced price rise. Okay, so you're basically saying that according to you, we don't need the Fed to change its monetary policies in order to see the next crypto bull market? Yes, absolutely. And, and it, would, it would have to do with increased adoption, increased usage, you know, more people holding it in wallets, more people utilizing it. But what about the fact that Bitcoin is still obviously correlated to stocks, right? We've seen the S&P pumping this week. Bitcoin pumping as well. Wouldn't that mean that they're correlated? Well, Mark says that they are slowly going to become decoupled over time. And this is his reason. And he also talks about that $37 trillion that could flood into this sort of new generation. Okay, so you're basically saying that the crypto summer will come relatively soon. Uh, I would say in a few months from now. Um, but still, you uh, foresee that the prices of equities will continue going down. So uh, if I understood correctly, you are envisioning a decoupling of crypto from equities. Is that correct? Ultimately, I view these markets as not correlated and, and independent of one another. And people say, oh, but, but Bitcoin and, and, and the markets were correlated from November to June. Of course they were. In liquidations, in bear markets, in liquidations, everything's correlated. International stocks, emerging market stocks, U.S. stocks, bonds, everything goes down. Again, because liquidations are different than bear markets. Liquidations are when there's too much leverage in the system and people are forced to sell. And again, they don't get to sell what they want to sell. They sell what they have to sell. And that's usually the most liquid assets. So I do believe that we're going to see investors look to their portfolio and say, 
Hmm. Higher rates probably means lower growth rates in the future um, because we got, you know, tighter liquidity conditions, which means I probably want to have less exposure to, to growth assets. I probably want to have more exposure to diversifying assets that protect my portfolio. Well, bonds don't work in a rising rate environment. So how about digital assets? And, and my belief is that people will look at the digital assets and look at the long-term data and say, huh, they're quite uncorrelated to other assets because the drivers of digital assets are not the same as traditional assets. Traditional assets are driven by economic growth, Fed policies, inflation. Crypto is driven by the technology itself, millennial adoption. That digital divide is so acute and so wide. And what people miss, I think, is there's 37 odd trillion dollars with a T, trillion, that's going to go from my generation, the boomers, to your generation, the echo boomers. That's a lot of money. That money's not going to stay at Merrill Lynch and UBS and invest in, in municipal bonds and, and IBM. I believe it's going to migrate into the digital asset ecosystem and put, you know, constant rising pressure on, on prices. Now, for all my friends that are coming over from the Altcoin Daily channel, you know, shout out to those guys for having me on the channel. I really appreciated the opportunity. We had gone over this chart, and I'm not going to go over it again because we went over it on that channel if you didn't see it. But ultimately, we were looking at how long bull and bear markets last, right? And bull markets last about 6.6 .6 years with an average of 340%. Bear markets last on average 1.3 years with an average of negative 38%. Now, if you take this, and this is, this is data going all the way back to 1926, going all the way back to 1926. So if we actually just, you know, kind of plot this out on the chart over here, which is what we were going over. Um, let me actually get rid of this EMA ribbon super quick. And, you know, you just, and, I, and I plotted it on, on the channel, but basically, you know, looking at the average drawdown, including the fact that it, it tends to last longer in a recession, you know, these are all the Bitcoin havings, this green line and this yellow dotted line right here represents when we, according to history on average, should be 20% up from the bottom of the bear market for traditional equities, right? So if you look at that level, guess what? That would put us right in place where Bitcoin normally is, right around that area, right? If we look at this three quarter area, we're in a bear market usually. We're at the tail end of the bear market usually. And even by the time we get to the halving, we usually are always below the all time high, right? So if you actually look at this chart, regardless of where you think Bitcoin's gonna go, fake out to the upside, fake out to the downside, whatever, if you look historically, we are exactly where we're supposed to be leading into this. And you know, from this area, that would still put us below this level, which is fine. It's okay if we're still trading below the all-time high by the time April of you know 2024 hits. And you know, usually, you know, how much is it from that area to the top? What do, what do we usually um you know, how long does it usually take for a new all-time high? So that was about 518 days roughly. What about here? That was about 365 days, you know? So somewhere in that vicinity, you know, we can kind of just ballpark it and say maybe like 400. Obviously, nobody truly knows. You know, that basically says that we could be seeing a new Bitcoin all-time high maybe by May of 2025. And I know that seems like a long time away, but guys, if we look at the cycles, we're exactly on track of where we're supposed to be. So nothing is really that crazy, right? Everyone's saying, oh, it's so different this time cyclically, it's kind of the same. I mean, yes, we had a double top. We don't usually see that, but ultimately it's kind of the same pattern, right? The four-year cycle is clearly still intact. And also we're seeing lots of interest. Now, remember Kevin O'Leary was talking about the Stablecoin Act, right? Um, or whatever it's called. And, you know, essentially if we can get this, uh, you know, this, and he says it's a really easy bill to pass. This could be coming sometime, you know, early next month. He says, You'd want to be long on Bitcoin for that, right? Because we could see right here, a crackdown by the SEC on the crypto industry in the US is actually having an unexpected effect. You would think that this would be scaring people away, but actually more market players are now saying that they want to invest in the space. 60% of respondents from a 564 uh person conducted a uh, thing that Bloomberg did. Basically in this survey, they see the recent regulatory crackdown on the crypto industry as a positive sign, with some arguing that regulation also brings the clarity that traditional investors need. One of the industry players who said 
He welcomed regulation and increased enforcement was Chris Gaffney, president of the World Markets at TIAA Bank. He said, I'm in the yes camp. As a professional investor, you need regulated investment opportunities, and it opens the door for me for more professional investors to get involved in crypto if it's more regulated. The more they can get crypto out of the Wild West and into tradition into traditional investing, the better off it's going to be, right? So I'm not saying that, you know, I, I want over-regulation. I'm not saying we need to KYC everything and just take away all people's freedoms and liberties. That's not what I'm saying. But what I am saying is that some form of classification could help, right? You know, seeing what will happen with this XRP case, uh, you know, are, are, are we going to have um, these tokens as unregulated securities? What's a commodity? You know, asset versus currency, right? All very, very important definitions that a lot of these bigger players are going to pretty much be scared to come in unless they have that regulatory clarity, right? It is a double-edged sword, you know, it, it, there are some things about it that may not be good, but I think overall, especially if you're in the camp of, you know, Bitcoin specifically and you want to get more people access to Bitcoin, get more people, you know, in, into the ecosystem, you know, this is what they're looking for. So that is something to point out. And also, we kind of do have a big win. Seems like a lot of news coming out, you know, from Europe, but we have uh, Rishi Sunak is now, I, I don't know if I said his name right, I've never actually heard it said out loud, is now British Prime Minister. So you can see down here, he's recognized as a crypto-friendly government official, and he's always been vocal about his desire to make the country a global hub for crypto. Now that he is already in office, the crypto space awaits the realization of plans and programs he has announced before to be put in the UK on the global map. They want to you know, basically be the center for mass adoption. Uh, the UK has witnessed a growth in crypto adoption over the last few years. In fact, the 1.5 million owners of cryptocurrency in the country increased by 650% from 2018 to 2021 alone, ballooning to nearly 10 million, right? So it says the Brit British government has already laid out some groundwork, including making stable coins as legal forms of payment for goods and services within the UK. This, according to the 42-year-old investment banker turned politician, is also part of the plan to make sure that their financial service industry is always at the forefront of technology and innovation. So ultimately, guys, having a look at Bitcoin right now, we have broken out of the heartline of this downtrend. We have broken out of this blue zone, which is very, very good. And as you can see right here, we are stalling out. I still do have a target for this move, even if we do have a slight pullback, you know? I mean, I'm not saying we're gonna do it. There's always a chance that we do come down and retest again here at the uh, $19,450 level, which at that point, I then would reload the longs again. Um, that's what I'm doing, because I do think that this move is gonna continue up. I do think we're gonna have legs to this. And, you know, we could have the highest possible target um, right here at around $25,000, uh, right? And that would be, you know, where we really just couldn't break out of this channel. So that's what I'm looking at, guys. Uh, we could have that retest. It's possible. We could just continue going. Like I said, when you get legs, you know, and, and on a move like this and it starts moving, you could just literally just take out all these levels, slice through them like butter. However, realistically, you know, not emotion speaking here, markets tend to not just go straight up. Let's be honest. You have this big 13% move. You probably have a little percentage retrace, you know, start to put in some kind of, um, you know, I don't know, some kind of a trend, maybe something like this, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, that would, that would, that wouldn't be impossible to see Bitcoin, you know, maybe come back down here, you know, before continuing up. I don't, I don't know how it's going to play out. I don't know a crystal ball, but I do know that we were overdue for this move. And I, I do think that we could have a potential continued rally throughout Q4 into, you know, the end of the year. And then maybe the beginning of the year, you know, we kind of have that fizzle. Maybe we hit some resistance, go sideways again some more, which is very healthy for the market. And, you know, as I said, the four-year cycle is on track and we could potentially have that $250,000 Bitcoin that Mark Yusko uh, believes could be happening in the next five to six years. I know I didn't play that part of the clip, but if you just Google him, that's like his forecast. So thank you so much for coming back. You guys rock you. The reason that I make these videos. And of course, if you are looking to trade and you want to learn how to do it responsibly, and profitably, make sure that you watch this tutorial right now. I think it's the best one on the internet. That's it for me, guys. Thank you so much for coming back. My name's K-Dub. This is Crypto Zombie. Until next time, stay crypto. And of course, peace out.